Okay, so it's about 11.15, so we'll go ahead and get started. I um, want to welcome everyone to this session. Thanks for making the trek over from the main hall. Uh, we're hoping that uh, it wouldn't deter participation, so we're glad to see all of you. Uh, my name is Anis Sheikh. I'm with IBM. Um, I'm joined up here. Uh, this talk is going to be a bit of a tag team. Um, we have a few representatives from you know, different organizations that are participating in the Open Daylight Project. So with me, uh, Stefan Bauke from Ericsson, Kyle Mestri from Cisco, and Chris Wright from Red Hat. Uh, so what we want to do in this session is actually, we have some charts that we'll go through, um, but we want to do that relatively quickly, you know, in about half the time if we can, and then really leave the rest of the time uh, for you to ask questions about the project, clarifications, um, you know, any information that you'd like, and we'll answer as many questions as we can, or we'll get you the answers um, afterward if we can't. But I think my colleagues uh, will do a better job than me. So in this talk, we're going to cover a few things. You know, not everybody may know what Open Daylight is all about. You may have heard about it, read about it. Um, so we're going to give some background. You know, what is Open Daylight? What is the project about? You know, who are the participants? You know, who makes up the community in Open Daylight today? Um, our first release is codenamed Hydrogen. So we'll talk a little bit about what's in Hydrogen, what you can expect to see. Uh, when the first uh, release comes out at the end of this year. Um, and then the focus of the latter part of the talk will really be about how Open Daylight integrates with OpenStack. And we, re we really want to position Open Daylight as you know, the de facto standard SDN um, platform to support OpenStack deployments. And so we'll end with that, and then we'll have time, plenty of time, hopefully, for questions and answers. So first I'll start with what Open Daylight is. So it's an open source software project. Uh, it's not a standards um, project or standards body. We are um, organized under the Linux Foundation. It's not a Linux related project as such, but we are in, under the umbrella of Linux Foundation. Linux Foundation provides us with a lot of support, um, both infrastructure, organizational, um, you know, outreach and publicity. Uh, so they've been a fantastic partner for the project. Uh, and the goal of Open Daylight is really to drive the adoption um, in the marketplace and among users for software-defined networking technology. So through having a sort of common industry accepted uh, platform that a lot of the community and the industry has come around uh, to create, we hope to really drive adoption uh, much more rapidly for, for SDN. So there's sort of three main sub-goals here. One is, of course, code. It's an open source project after all. And so our main uh, product is code, and we're really focusing on creating a robust and highly extensible uh, code base that covers all of the major components you need to set up an SDN environment. And we judge our success in a number of ways, but one of the ways is around acceptance of the project. So broad industry acceptance, both among users and vendors. So on the user side, you know, obviously we want users you know, using Open Daylight to address their networking problems, um, you know, using the SDN capability that it provides. You know, either themselves directly by you know, using the community open source version or through a vendor package version. And then among vendors, you know, we like to see um, vendors introducing products into the market that are based on, on open daylight. And of course, you know, the third and maybe most important aspect is the community, to really have a thriving and growing technical community. We're uh, really pleased with the amount of interest that's been shown in open daylight uh, thus far. We have Lots of participants across lots of organizations, you know, big and small, individual and affiliated. Um, so Chris is going to talk more about that in a couple of slides. So what are we building? What is the main product going to be? So the focus is really on building an SDN platform. So it's not a whole end-to-end -end solution, but it's a highly modular platform that can handle a diverse set of use cases and multiple implementation approaches. There's lots of innovation happening in the, in the SDN area right now. Uh, we really want to embrace and encourage that um, in the project. In addition, there's a set of common abstractions that we're building into the platform that basically abstract these capabilities that are in the platform for an application user through a set of northbound uh, application programming interfaces, APIs. And then we have a layer that does translation or intermediation of those capabilities into uh, protocols on the so-called southbound side of the controller. When we show the architecture, it'll become a bit clearer. There's a set of core network services that every SDN platform needs, you know, things like topology discovery, tracking you know, where switches or network devices are, where hosts are, et cetera. There's a, a number of core network services that are programmable and reusable in the platform. 
And it also includes a set of network applications. So some of the projects in Open Daylight are focused on building applications that run above the controller, whereas others are focused on building new services that reside in the controller. And then, of course, there's a number of additional things that we need to make all of this come together. You know, maybe most importantly, integration and testing, and there's a lot of focus on that. We have a separate project just focused on testing. So as I said, we're going to tag team. I'm going to turn it over to Chris to continue, uh, and then we'll move on down. All right, thank you. Uh, so digging a little deeper or giving a, a kind of graphical view of that architecture that Anis was talking about, this is open daylight. This is the architectural view of open daylight. If you look at the top of the picture, this is where the applications sit. So this would be above the northbound APIs. The northbound APIs are a fairly critical part of this project. It's again, not a standards organization, the Open Daylight Project, but we're trying to build the de facto standardization of, of APIs in an SDN environment so that application developers have a, a single reference point for building their applications and don't need to make uh, difficult choices about which arbitrary commercial controller uh, are we working against. Instead, we can build against a common set of APIs. Those APIs are built on top of this, the services that Anis was referring to. And in the middle of all of this is something that we call the service abstraction layer. It's a fairly key part of the project. The service abstraction layer is the piece that allows us to decouple those northbound APIs and services from the southbound technology that's talking to each of the different forwarding elements. Uh, you know, most people in the SDN space are very familiar with OpenFlow. OpenFlow is a perfect example of a southbound uh, plug-in and a protocol that you would speak from the controller down to the forwarding devices, but our view within the project is that OpenFlow is just one implementation of, of that kind of control plane and there will be others, and we want to make sure that that abstraction layer is the piece that allows applications to continue working regardless of the communication path between the controller or the protocol between the controller and the forwarding elements. If you see on the far right of this slide, you notice that there's a curly bracket that's identifying open daylight. The purpose is to say that's the scope of the project. It's a fairly wide scope. It's inclusive of the southbound plugins. It's inclusive of that central uh, service abstraction layer. It's inclusive of the north side services and the APIs associated with them and applications as well. Um, down in the very bottom, we have some, some actual forwarding elements. Those are, are sort of nominally placed out of scope because it's, you know, it's a whole different world of building either hardware or virtual switches that those, those solutions already exist, and we're not trying to reinvent that. So we'll look a little bit at um, one view of who Open Daylight is. Open Daylight is sort of an industry consortium. Our goal is to promote an open source community around building an SDN controller, and this is the corporate sponsorship that's building that community. So if you saw Mark McLaughlin's keynote this morning, um, he stressed that in on the one side, we have corporate interests, and on the other side, we have community members, and that these are not sort of mutually exclusive groups. And in fact, many of us are employed full time by these uh, sponsors to help us build this infrastructure and this technology. So it's an important view of who's involved in the project. If you look at the list, you see a lot of familiar names for the networking space. And, um, you know, uh, I like to refer to it as a veritable who's who of the, of the networking industry. And that's exactly the kind of momentum and community that we're trying to build in the Open Daylight Project. If we look one level deeper at who's actually involved, it's a community. This is a community based on openness, meritocracy, transparency, anything you would expect for building and maintaining a community open source project. Currently, there's on the order of 100 different contributors, and um, we are seen an, an increasing number of projects coming into the Umbrella project. So we started off uh, a little over six months ago. Actually, maybe almost, almost exactly seven months ago at this point. We started off initially with two projects. We're up to the order of about 15 projects in that short time period. And uh, we'll go through some, a review of some of those projects and some of those that will be released in the upcoming release in Hydrogen in, in early December. Um, and again, I think Anis mentioned a strong integration and testing community, and that's something that should resonate well here, the OpenStack uh, Design Summit. It's the integration and testing 
in the OpenStack context is one of the key pieces that's allowed OpenStack to um, move so rapidly and innovate so quickly. And we, we believe very strongly that that's a critical part of building the infrastructure for building this project. Uh, so that's actually a plea to anybody out there who's interested in integration testing, we could use your help. Uh, this is just a quick view and then I'll turn it over uh, to uh, Stefan to talk about the actual details of the release. But uh, as I mentioned, it, we are uh, upwards of 15 projects at this point. The, the nomenclature there, bootstrap or incubation, refers to the beginning stages of our, our process for bringing projects into the umbrella project. Um, the, again, the code name for this first release is Hydrogen. It's, come, it's due out December 9th. And uh, we have a notion of additions or delivery vehicles or mechanisms for, for giving this uh, bundle of software to users. And we're bundling this software in a number of different ways. One is a, what we call the base edition. And this is a, intended to be just the simplest bare bones pieces of functionality you need to, to run the controller. Uh, there's a virtualization or kind of cloud-centric um, edition, and that's something that's, that we'll talk about with, with Kyle's review of how we're integrating with OpenStack. And then there's a service provider edition that's geared more towards providing the, uh, the SDN level requirements that you would see in a service provider environment. Um, I think that's it. So we'll, I will turn it over to Stefan to talk about the details of the simultaneous release coming up. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Chris. So here you see um, the list of the project that we currently have. As you can see, it's already a pretty considerable number, and this is mostly thanks to the highly modular nature of Open Data. It's designed um, you know, to accommodate easy um, addition of new projects um, as we go along. And we have 15 at the moment, but we expect uh, more to be added soon. So um, since there's no time to go through all of those um, in detail right now, I will just uh, very quickly say a few words about each of them. And if you have more detailed questions, uh, please do this in the Q&A session afterwards. Um, so I would start with the controller, which is really uh, more like a controller platform, which um, you know provides the base OSGI Java framework um, that we use, um, uh, you know, to support the modular design of, of the platform. It also um, includes uh, what is called the service abstraction layer, which is an abstraction layer um, that allows us to support a multitude of southbound protocols using plugins. Um, it also has, to the northbound, um, towards the consumer, like OpenStack, for example, um, a framework for northbound API. It's an extensible, extensible API framework that supports both local um, APIs using OSGI, but also um, web service uh, RESTful uh, APIs for remote uh, consumers. Um, so this is really, uh, you know, the central piece of it, but um, it allows um, allows us to host um, you know, a multitude of service, and that's basically what the other projects are currently doing. We have um, uh, two um, services right now that are focusing on network virtualization, which is uh, really what is um, probably uh, very relevant for OpenStack going forward. We have um, VTN, Virtual Tunnel Networks, which is a SDN uh, uh, based, uh, an SDN network virtualization controller based on OpenFlow. It provides a logical network abstraction that is uh, reminiscent of, of you know, the traditional networking view, L2 and L3, uh, uh, logical network elements um, that, that we are used to. That's what it exports to the northbound. Um, and it also has um, an interesting uh, you know, application on top, which is called the VTN coordinator, which allows us to provision networks across multiple um, open data controller when it's, uh, when it's finalized. Um, the next project, OpenDOV, is um, a network virtualization solution that is based on um, overlay networks on top of IP. It uses uh, VXLAN encapsulation, but it has its own control plane. So um, it does not rely on, on IP multicast, for example, for broadcast replication. Um, it has its own control plane, and to the northbound, it will expose an API that is uh, geared to be neutron friendly. It's basically designed to be easily um, you know, integrated with, with OpenStack. We will talk a little bit about that in, uh, in Kyle's section later on. The next service, uh, Affinity Management Service, is essentially a uh, language that allows applications uh, to express their needs towards the network. Like, for example, you can um, specify quality of service 
policies between uh, the components of an application group. And uh, that allows the SCN controller essentially to configure the network according to the needs of the application without you know, requiring the application to be um, aware of network topology and specific um, details of, of the underlying network. LISP mapping service, LISP is, uh, as most of you probably know, it's an ITF standard for location identity split. Um, it can be used um, you know, to build, um, to do network virtualization based on a separation of logical and physical planes. And what this, this LISP service in Open Daylight includes is a mapping service that um, provides information and access um, to the Open Daylight services uh, to the mapping between physical and logical resources. And it also includes a southbound uh, LISP plugin um, that allows Open Daylight to um, you know, configure LISP aware devices in the network. So th this could potentially also be used as a network virtualization service um, to support Neutron at some point. Um, the next um, project, Yang Tools, is about, it's basically about building a tool chain for Yang, which is the uh, modeling language that was chosen by Open Daylight um, to um, you know, express models for the various southbound protocols and southbound technologies that we support. Um, and um, they built, uh, or they are focused on building tools to support the infrastructure um, of Open Daylight. Finally, um, Defense for All is um, one of our first um, applications, I would almost say. It's, it's um, you know, utilizing um, Open Daylight to uh, provide detection and mitigation of, of distributed denial of service attacks. Um, imagine, uh, you know, using an SCN controller to, to place probes in the network or to, to uh, redirect traffic um, that is suspected, uh, you know, to be um, malicious into a scrubbing service before it reaches its target, right? So, so you utilize the programmability of the SEM-based network um, to, to, to do effective um, defense against denial of service attacks. Finally, the, 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 the group of the last four projects listed here is um, implementing a number of southbound um, uh, plugins to support a wide variety of protocols. Uh, one of the goals of Open Daylight is to support a number a spectrum of deployment scenarios um, in, in very different, that, that on very different network technologies with different protocols. And here you see a few of the projects that are adding um, support for more protocols beyond just OpenFlow and NetConf, what, what, what is currently being supported. So BGPLS is, is um, uh, a BGP-based uh, protocol basically to um, distribute information about topology and traffic engineering from the network to the SCN controller, and the SCN controller can use that information to make smart decisions about uh, uh, configuring the network. And for that, it can use uh, PSAP, um, which is a protocol for, that was originally developed for uh, path computation engines, but it allows the Open, the open Data controller to, uh, for example, configure paths in, in your network using, for example, MPLSTP, uh, TE, sorry. Um, OpenFlow protocol, of course, is well known. Um, OpenFlow 1.0 is, is supported as, as part of the uh, base controller platform, but we are also working on extending that support. Um, right now, um, we are planning for the first release to have support for OpenFlow 1.3. And uh, the way this works is we have a Java implementation in, in the form of an OpenFlow library, and based on that, um, uh, OpenFlow southbound plugins uh, can be implemented rather easily. So we plan to support, to support 1.0, 1.3, but also um, upcoming future um, OpenFlow versions. Um, OESDB um, is um, a Southbound plugin to support uh, Open vSwitch um, uh, OVSDB protocol, obviously, to, to be able to configure um, Open vSwitch. And um, this is also currently being used to implement, um, or it's, it's an upcoming use to implement uh, Neutron support using um, OVSDB. And finally, we have um, another southbound protocol support, SNMP for SDN, um, which honestly I don't know all the details about, but um, it is a very interesting approach of using um, SNMP to, to configure um, flows in Ethernet switches, from what I understand. But it's, it's also planned to extend this to further uses uh, or to use SNMP for, for a wider variety of things later on. So let, let me just give you a brief uh, overview look of what the whole thing now looks like. Um, the basic structure was already um, described um, before. 
Um, as you can see, this, this is quite a big number of, of um, components that we are dealing with, and uh, you know, adopting this uh, for deployment um, can be a daunting task. So what um, Open Data decided is that, that we are going to prepackage a number of editions. As already mentioned by Chris, we have um, the base edition, which is basically just the SDN controller. It can be used for testing experimental purposes, for example. Um, then we have a service provider edition, which is uh, targeted at the needs of network providers. And finally, and most interestingly, probably for, for, from the OpenStack perspective, is the virtualization edition, which is geared towards um, data center networking, essentially. So it, it, is, um, it basically contains the subset of um, open data components that, that are most likely to be needed uh, for this particular purpose. Like in this case, the um, network virtualization services and the OpenStack um, adaptation service that Kyle will, will talk about in the next two slides. Yeah, and uh, with this, I think I will hand over to Kyle now, who will talk about OpenStack integration. Thanks. So, so hopefully that was a, a pretty good background on everything as far as what Open Daylight is, what it's made up of. So now at this point, I'll kind of go through the integration we have planned for OpenStack Neutron as well. And, um, so what you can see in this slide here is, is a rough diagram of, of how this is gonna work. So the Open Daylight team has actually taken the time to come up with this Open Daylight, um, I think it's called um, the Neutron API service effectively, and those are the northbound APIs on Open Daylight there. And those are the APIs that, that map to the Neutron APIs at this point, and effectively allows our OpenStack Neutron plugin to communicate with Open Daylight. The idea here is, is that um, effectively the Neutron plugin can be a thin proxy that, that sends all the requests down to Open Daylight, and Open Daylight can then handle orchestrating the virtual networks, the physical networks, whatever you need. This also allows multiple implementations um, to be plugged into the Open Daylight API service inside of Open Daylight there um, as well. Um, there's a lot of benefits to this design, not the least of which is it simplifies the, the OpenStack Neutron plugin. Uh, that, that's, that's actually a huge benefit um, by keeping that thin um, and moving all of the, the orchestration of the, of the networks and everything like that into open daylight as well at this point. Um, effectively, it pushes all of the, the complexity of this down into open daylight and kind of removes it from OpenStack Neutron as well. Um, we, you know, we'd, we'd like this to be the, effectively the, the open source controller implementation for, for OpenStack Neutron. In other words, this would be the reference implementation of if you're gonna use an open source uh, controller with OpenStack Neutron, you know, we'd like this to be the reference one effectively. So this, this work is, is currently ongoing right now. Um, it's like I think the, the other guy said, it's planned for the hydrogen release at this point. Um, the OpenStack Neutron API service is now available. It's, it's been available for, uh, I think it's been at least um, a month now in the Open Daylight project as well. So we're, we're actually actively involved with writing the plugin on the Neutron side to utilize that. On the flip side, inside of Open Daylight itself, um, a lot of the other projects that were mentioned, like OVSDB, OpenDove, VTN, they're in the process of integrating with that API on the southbound side of it so that they can uh, be enabled by the OpenStack Neutron plugin as well. Um, you know, the initial work is, is focused on, I guess, at this point, uh, a modular layer two plugin for Neutron as well. Um, we're gonna enable additional services as well as we planned it. Um, the, the plugin is, is planned to be upstream during the ISELS release of OpenStack at, at this point. We have a blueprint filed. Um, the work has already started at this point. One other thing that, that I'd like to point out is we, we have a GitHub repository for all this work, but the real interesting thing, I think, for the people in this room that maybe aren't familiar with Open Daylight but are familiar with OpenStack and specifically DevStack, we actually have integration with DevStack such that um, you can actually pull the GitHub version of our, dev, of our dev stack and set up in your local RC and it will actually clone Open Daylight from Git and it will start it in a separate screen window uh, and set up Neutron to talk to it as well. So I think that removes some of the initial complexity from people that aren't familiar with Open Daylight. You can just run dev stack and it will enable Open Daylight, pull it down, and then you can, you can utilize it that way. Um, the dev stack integration 
also allows you to, to use an existing open daylight install if you have that as well. But I think that's, that's actually a key thing. And, that, and the plan is to push the dev stack work upstream as well. I think that's, that's actually really nice for people that, that want to just give, it a, give open daylight a spin with OpenStack Neutron. So I think we're almost done with the slides here. This is the, the call to action slide. So open daylight is, is open to everyone. We, we'd love to see more people participating in the project, um, whether it's you know, documentation, QA, development, however you'd like. Um, like any great open source project, we have all of the standard things, mailing lists, an IRC channel. Um, bring your patches if you, find a, if you find a bug or you'd like to implement a feature. You know, we'd love to have you involved with that. Bring your project proposals. Um, go ahead and try out the, the, new, um, the Neutron integration or just download it yourself and, and run Open Daylight and give it a, give it a try. I think this is our, our final slide. Um, you know, we have a wiki as well. Uh, we also have weekly open conference calls that are open to everybody. If you're interested in Open Daylight, those are actually a great way to, to get a feel for the project. Um, to join the, the weekly conference calls as well. Um, we have an IRC channel, like I mentioned before, mailing lists as well, um, a Twitter account, and a hashtag. So, so there we go. So I, I think it, at this point, we're done with the slides. At this point, we'd like to kind of make it an open Q&A uh, from the audience. So, uh, yeah, I think the, um, we have a microphone as well here. Uh, thank you. So does anyone have a question? Yes. Thanks for the, all the detailed information about that, actually. Uh, we are really interested in uh, this kind of, uh, seems like a really true, truly open kind of, uh, hopefully, SDN approach in OpenStack. Um, uh, in ge general, actually, a lot of actual concern in terms of using SDN technology, but uh, I would say, let, let's say, two big concerns. One is a kind of security issue, and the other is a single point of failure of SDN controller. So uh, basically, I have two questions. Like how, you know, what kind of plan you have in terms of dealing with the security issue and as well as, uh, you know, this uh, bottleneck of or single point of controller issue? Uh, so the, the Two questions. One was how do we manage performance bottlenecks associated with being in the path, potentially being in the path of packet flows? And the other question is how do we manage uh, this centralized controller, a fault in that centralized controller killing your entire network? Um, so initially, SDN controllers can fall into two or, or three categories, um, typically called reactive, proactive, and hybrid. Our, you know, I, at least my view, we're working at Red Hat and working within a cloud infrastructure. We have an orchestration system, OpenStack, that knows ahead of time where it's placing all of the virtual machines. So we can pre-populate all of the relevant flow table entries associated with um, the virtual machine traffic so that we don't need to rely on pushing every first packet or every unknown packet that's in the system through this centralized uh, controller and creating a performance bottleneck. Um, we're also simultaneously working on improving the, what we call the packet in processing rate for the controller. So we want to ensure that it can handle a large number of incoming packets that are, uh, need to be re inspected and reviewed by the controller and then it reacted in reaction to some you know, unknown event that we need to handle from on the controller side. The controller it's usually referred to as a logically centralized controller. So it's a distributed application. So this is not a single point of failure. It's a cluster. Uh, we use clustering technology to replicate the data across all the controllers. And it's actually an interesting space for innovation in, in this project. Um, currently, we're using uh, in-memory replication of all of the state using uh, the, the project is a Java project. And we're using a Java building block called InfiniSpan to do the replication. Um, we're also looking at adopting other techniques and some of the projects in, within the Open Daylight controller, like uh, the Lisp mapping service, use Cassandra for state replication and um, distributed storage. So you know, there, there's a lot of room for 
innovation there and, and pushing the envelope, but fundamentally, it's a distributed application, so it's not a single point of failure. And uh, in a cloud context, it makes most sense to do mostly proactive flow, in a, uh, flow setup. Just to your question about security, I think also, right? So, um, you know, we we have multiple southbound plugins as uh, as we described in the architecture, and you know, we have this notion, at least for the open flow part of the controller, this notion of a connection manager. Where, not yet, but it, it's actually work that's ongoing to you know secure the connections to the switches, for example, introduce. Um, you know, TLS and secure connections down to data plane devices, as well as uh, for the northbound side to secure, you know, um, API calls uh, into the controller. So the controller does have a notion of, you know, roles as well, and you can use roles and another notion called containers um, that can also be used to isolate function and make it available only to you know, uh, authorized users. So there is definitely work ongoing on the security side. I won't say that we have um, all of it figured out yet, but in, at least in the context of the open flow controller role, um, there is uh, a fair bit of work ongoing. Um, and you know, as Chris described, the single point of failure uh, mitigation through clustering. Anyone else want to add anything? Yeah, go ahead. The scale target? Um, yeah, that's a tough one. It's kind of an ongoing, uh, you know, it's work in progress on scaling. You know, I think the controller has been tested with, you know, up to, you know, 50 instances of it so that you could scale it out, scale the cluster of the controller, 40 or 50, I can't remember what Madhu said, but it's a pretty big number. But the default is kind of, you know, like four or five instances for a data center is kind of how you would imagine running it. Um, as far as, you know, Packet in rates for the open flow piece. You know, some of the comments that Chris made about performance are kind of specific to the open flow operation. There's other things that we do other than open flow in the controller. Um, but, you know, through a bunch of performance work, we've, right now, I think we scale up to 100K packet ins per second if you look at C bench type numbers. Um, number of switches that can be managed, that one I'm not sure, but that's something that's sort of ongoing as another scalability target is to increase, you know, the total number of devices under management. But I don't think we have a, number yet for that. So, you know, the scaling and performance work is kind of ongoing, like perpetual, right? So, um, you know, we started with a certain uh, scale and performance level. I think over the last couple months, we've actually increased it a lot through changes to the threading model, changes to the IO libraries that we're using to make them asynchronous, you know, moving some synchronous calls to being asynchronous to get to those higher numbers um, uh, that we're aiming for. But we're, that's all work that's still ongoing. So I'm sorry I'm kind of hand-waving a bit, but it's just because some of those numbers are still, you know, being worked on directly. Do you guys have any other? Sure. I just wanted to mention that um, even though we don't have hard numbers right now, we are in the process of setting up a testbed that will allow us to do larger scale testing. And we should be able to provide you with some first numbers um, in a couple of months, I guess. There's a question in the back. Yes. Uh, my question is that, um, as you alluded, the open daylight project is continue to evolve and now is the kind of an early stage of development. So what kind of propositions and values that you can see it could bring to the table at least in the first few releases? Because like today I read an article from like reading some of the mobile carriers coming that like the SDN is not about CapEx saving but probably are the features that it could bring to the table. But does someone have your thought on you know what open daylight will bring to the table at least in the first few releases? Are you asking specifically for carriers? Uh, service provider, yeah. Service provider. Let's, so I'll, I'll ask maybe Stefan to take a stab at that since he's, he works for a... <laughs> you want to talk? Okay, so, I mean, the, the service provider edition, right, that we're working on, I'll just mention that kind of the focus areas of it, right? So. You know, and in addition, there's work that service providers are, are bringing and driving in SDN standards bodies like ONF, uh, right, Open Networking Foundation, that's driving the open flow standard and extending the open flow to be, you know, something that can be used in wide area networks and optical transport networks, you know, things that are more geared for service provider environments rather than data center. And that work is also intended to be brought and implemented and reflected in, in open daylight. So today, the service provider edition has functions for service providers that focus more on traffic engineering capabilities, right? So as uh, Stefan mentioned, 
you know, BGPLS to get topology from BGP enabled networks, PCEP to do path computation and pushing down, you know, the results of those computations. Um, but in the future, you know, as, for example, OpenFlow evolves to um, address service provider uh, network problems um, in the ONF, we fully expect that stuff to come back into Open Daylight and be, you know, available as reference implementations in the Open Daylight controller as well. One other thing to consider, the service provider space, um, there's a lot of buzz around network function virtualization. The Open Daylight controller has in, already in it, in this first upcoming release, the functional capability of, of doing service chaining and providing flow, uh, flow direction through network functions. So that's a pretty meaningful impact to the existing service provider or one set of service pr provider requirements. Uh, obviously, as we've mentioned a few times, our goal is to grow this project to fit a wider and wider set of use cases. So, you know, come, come with your use cases and patches accepted and we'll, uh, we'll grow the community together. Yeah, I mean, I would just add that, you know, it looks like the technology may be kind of data center focused and certainly we have service provider technology, but, you know, we fully intend to have uh, the platform address a wide variety of SDN usage uh, models, you know, in service provider networks, in data center networks, in mobile and enterprise networks as well. There was a question in the back. Yeah. Um, hi, I've got a dumb question. Currently, I use uh, Open vSwitch um, with um, Quantum in production. Um, how is my life going to change with Open Daylight moving forward? I, you know, if you could just give me a conceptual picture of what's going to happen, say, Ice House of moving forward. Carl, you want to take this one? So, so are you you're using the Open vSwitch plugin or uh, as well, or okay? So, so effectively. Um, as was stated before, for, for your type of scenario, Open Daylight is going to have both open, you know, open flow support as well as OBSDB support as well. So the intention would be to, to take your use case, you, you could use the Open Daylight Neutron plugin, and effectively all of the, the Neutron API calls for creating things like networks, ports, subnets, and things like that will be handled um, by both a combination of the OpenFlow and the OBSDB code uh, inside of Open Daylight, so so we'll be able to both you know create ports uh, on the host as well as well as set up flows um, to do things pretty similar to what your Open vSwitch plugin is doing for you today at this point as well. Um, you know we hope that the the scalability will, would be a little bit better because I think the the Open vSwitch plugin I'm I, I'm not sure how large of a scale you're you're talking, but I. I know the Open vSwitch plugin is has some scalability challenges. I think at this point, so ho so hopefully this should address some of that as well, and, and also fulfill the use case you you have right now. When we're talking about OpenStack and um, Neutron integration, um, there has to be a way to specify what the networking requirements of the VMs are, and I assume that happens through heat. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that, and, and are there extensions needed to heat what's available today? Say a few words about that. Uh, well, so first of all, heat's not required. Heat is a helper. So it gives you a template language to do orchestrated application launching. You could do it all manually. There's a lot of steps to launch a VM and attach it to a network, especially if it's a, it's a collection of VMs and it's an application, it's a multi-tiered mm -hmm. application. Um, most of that functionality is already there in heat. Open daylight is pretty far away from that. That's very cent uh, central to the Neutron APIs that are available for managing your network resource requirements and the Nova APIs for launching virtual machines and associating them with these Neutron resources. Um, there are a few um, resource types in heat that are not available right now that would probably improve cloud formation um, parity. So that would be things that look more like an Amazon VPC style network. Uh, but from, a, from an open daylight point of view, we would see those as these 
fairly straightforward network topology requests that aren't, uh, they, they're not gonna fundamentally change how we're integrating with, with Neutron. Hope, I think hopefully that answers your question. That helps, thanks. Okay. I would just add that, you know, what we're focused on the initial integration, as you saw, is, you know, implementing the core Neutron APIs as a, as a first step, right? So those resources, Neutron resources, are already, you know, handled in heat, as Chris was saying. So from the point of view of extensions to heat, you know, at least initially, we're just focusing on providing an implementation for Neutron APIs, core APIs, uh, and some of the extensions, in some cases, and some of the implementations um, directly. So. It shouldn't require any changes yet to heat. As Neutron evolves and as Open Daylight support for different models in Neutron evolve, then, you know, heat would have to evolve accordingly, right? Yeah, so I guess this is going to be the last question since we have to uh, wrap. Um, just a quick question. I mean, uh, given that we have a lot of like high order network service types in Neutron, like load balancing, firewalling, I mean, how do you actually see that like uh, working with ODL? Because if I understand correctly, ODL doesn't actually do like firewalling as a service or, or high order application based uh, load balancing as a service. So how do you actually see that working w with Neutron? Stefan, you want to talk about that? something you're interested in? I mean, you're correct that, that currently we have no projects um, uh, like this in Open Daylight, but uh, we're, there's absolute interest in Open Daylight to, to address L4 to L7 services um, of that kind. And, um, you know, the way um, this will interact with Neutron is, is still very much an open question that, that will um, depend on how the, um, you know, the insertion framework, for example, in, in Neutron develops over a long time. But definitely this is in scope for, for the Open Daylight project um, to develop this kind of service. We just have no project at this, at this point, but we expect um, several of these projects to, to be created very soon. So, so I'd just like to add one, one quick thing as well. So all of what you're talking about in, in Neutron is effectively implemented now as like a service plugin in there. So there's really, and they all have an open source implementation on the Neutron side. So in the short term, those implementations for those service plugins could be used with the with the Open Daylight uh, plugin as well. So for instance, it's I'm not saying you could, but for instance, the routing is done using Linux network namespaces. So you could utilize that. Um, I think HA proxy is done for the load balancer work. So you could use that as well. So in the short term, the integration would likely look like that. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think we're out of time. Um, just wanted to thank everyone again for coming. Please, you know, find any of us. We, there's a booth for Open Daylight on the expo floor that uh, Phil Robb is um, manning. Uh, so feel free to drop by. Please ask more questions. And uh, as Kyle showed you, we're definitely looking for more um, participation from organizations, individuals, uh, the project is open and uh, open to all of you to come participate. Thanks again. <laughs>